Hey everybody, it's Tamara from Moogly and welcome to today's live. It is November 23rd, 2021 and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet these macrame crochet stars. Now macrame is confusing, right? That's a whole different craft. These aren't actually macrame, they are crochet, but they're made with Bernat macrame, so hence the name. Sort of a macrame look, if you will, but made with the crochet stitches that um, I know I'm more familiar with, certainly, than my macrame knots. Um, I can do a little bit of real macrame, but not a whole lot. Much more fun for, for me to crochet. So this is actually a pattern that I put out a few years ago using a different yarn that got completely discontinued. But I really liked the effect, and I wanted to revisit it. And this Burnett macrame yarn is just so distinctive and so different. Um, and I just thought it would be a real, real treat. I just did this for myself to see how the star would look in this yarn. And I loved it so much, I decided I needed to share that with share this with you guys because I know, you know, as a crocheter or as a crafter, you come across patterns and things and you, know, you say, oh gosh, I want to make that. And then you look up the parts and, you know, it's discontinued or unavailable. And then you think, well, gosh, I can't make that. You can absolutely, one of my favorite things about crochet patterns is you just pick it up, use a different yarn, use a different hook size and you get a completely different look. Like I really love the way this star turned out. It's very simple. It only takes two rounds. Um, so we only go around twice. That's it. It can be done with five star or uh, excuse me, five points or six points, whichever you prefer. Uh, the written pattern includes both as well as charts for both. And I've got the link hopefully in the description. If not, we'll get that in there later um, for the blog post, which has the link to the yarn and the hook and the pattern, as well as everything else that's going on at Moogly right now. So before we actually get started with this demo today, I do want to take just a minute and refresh my YouTube page so that I can go to the video. Oh, got a crazy hair there. So I can go to the video and uh, see if you have any questions as we're going here or comments. So, okay, it is up and running. Hi, Terry and Chris. So glad to see you again. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so now I can see your comments and questions. Um, I can see that one thumbs down I've already got. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Whoever you are that always gets on here first thing gives me one of those. Um, but anyway, so now we can go ahead and get started. Um, like I say, today I am using Bernat macrame. You can see right here, this oop, doesn't want to focus. Maybe if I cover my face, there it goes. Your inspirations, Bernat macrame. This one is in the natural colorway. One of the things I love about this is it comes in a bunch of really fun colors. There's teal, there's a really gorgeous green, um, sort of a burnt orange, lots of, even a black to explore. And then I think there's one that's, um, a little bit more, a little bit more taupey. I don't know, a little bit more that more natural color, if that makes sense. But it is a fun yarn. I really enjoy using it. Um, it does take a little bit of hand strength. So as you crochet with this, um, I do recommend that as needed, you take breaks and rest your hands a little bit and give them a little bit of a stretch as needed. Um, it can just, you know, uses a little bit more hand muscle to crochet with a yarn like this. Um, in addition to the yarn, of course, you need a hook. This one is a nine millimeter by Susan Bates. Um, I love these ones with the bamboo handles. They're just really great. Um, it can be useful to use stitch markers usually, but I don't know that you necessarily need one for this pattern. The one unusual thing you're going to need for any time you use this yarn is I'm going to recommend some tape. It could be like this tape, which is your clear gift wrapping type tape to avoid using uh, brand names. But um, although it says it right on the <laughs> says it right on the holder, doesn't it? But, you know, sort of a clear tape, um, washi tape, masking tape, whatever you've got. I like using clear because it just disappears. But this yarn, let me go ahead and open up for you here, has a tendency to want to um, unravel because of simply the way it's made. So if I pull the label off, the end's right there. And you can see that the company already has basically just wrapped some tape right around the end there. And that will just keep it from unraveling, unraveling rather, um, for a project like this, where it's not really a wearable or a washable, you can just leave that tape right attached. Um, I don't know if you'd be really using this for wearables or things that you'd be washing a lot, um, but in that case, you'd probably want to use some actual sewing thread to sew down the end. Otherwise, for objet art and things like that, you know, a little a little clear tape is always helpful. You just wrap it right around the end, um, kind of like the aglet on the end of a shoelace. Keeps it all nice and together. Um, and then you can just weave it right in with that tape right on it, cut it off as needed. Little, you know, a little bit more flexibility, but it will save you a lot of trouble uh, with that yarn in the end. So let me go ahead and pull over my hand camera here, and then we'll be able to see what we're doing. So we'll make our switch. There we go. 
So here we can see a little closer look at that star. You can see it's a great big size. It's about six inches across or so. And this is the written pattern. Originally, it was glittery crochet stars in two rounds. As you might have guessed, the original yarn had a little bit of glitter in it. No problem. We can make it in this yarn as well. So I've included in the pattern, there's both written instructions and charts. This is for the five pointed star right there. And this is the chart. I just print out the chart for the six pointed star. They're the same. It's just a matter of how many stitches you start with in that very first row that allows you two extra stitches in the first row allows you to put one extra point on there. So that's the basics for that. So let's go ahead and pull up some yarn here. Now this pattern begins with a magic circle. And like I say, if this wasn't already taped, the first thing I would do is go ahead and put some tape on it. But when you make your magic circle, normally I say come in about six inches, but when you've got a really bulky stiff yarn like this, I like to come in just a little bit more, simply because each of those stitches is just gonna take up more and more of that yarn. So coming in a good foot or so might waste a little bit of yarn when you cut it off at the end, but it's going to be better than running out of yarn as you're crocheting. So to make the magic circle, I'm going to go over my finger twice towards me, just like that. And then I will insert my hook. Now this is big, stiff yarn. So like I say, take your time with this. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that one right under the other one there, like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain two. Normally I would do a little bit more to lock this together. Oop, get on camera there. But with this big thick yarn, I just want to get up there as far as tall as I can. So there's one chain right there and another chain right there. Okay, so you can see I've got my two chains just like so. Now as I go back into work around this, I need to make sure to go into this circle and around this tail end. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to put work 10 double crochets into the ring. So I'm going to go right in there, but I want to make sure to go under that tail as well. And just really take your time and pull up each one of those stitches. It's going to take a little bit more effort and time than when you're crocheting with the yarns you may be used to. This little bit softer stuff. There we are. Oh my goodness, Terry, I'm so glad you're finding this helpful. Sorry guys, I was trying to read comments and crochet at the same time. Adding talking would have been too much, but yay, I'm so glad. Yeah, these Susan Bates hooks are um, a real lifesaver if you are especially doing big thick yarns like this. Um, if you've seen me crochet before, then you may have noticed I typically hold my hook more in this style and I tend to roll it a little bit, kind of more of that pencil style. For great big yarns like this, especially stiffer stuff like this macrame, You'll notice I've switched my hook hold to a knife grip. And for me, that just gives me a little bit more leverage to work with these big, thick yarns that are a little stiffer. Um, but everybody's different, obviously. You should, you know, use the hook hold that works best for you. But I know for me that switching to this sort of hold for this sort of yarn really does make it a lot easier. It's just a little bit more hand strength this way in this position, I think. And you don't need to be quite as delicate with it. So you can see this one comes in a little bit different shape here. So you always pull this one from the outside. I would never attempt to pull this from the inside. I think that would just, you'd end up having to just rewind the whole thing probably. So let's see. Keep going here. So yay, I'm glad you guys like this star. Yeah, I just think it's, it would be so pretty, um, like I say, in a garland or on a tree or hanging from an ornament hook. The possibilities really are pretty endless here. And this time I remember to grab my ornament hook so I can show you guys. So let's see, that first chain two does not count as a stitch. So I just want to count my actual double crochets here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got three more to go. And you can see too, I'm working, making sure to work over that tail end every time. with Every one of these stitches. There's one and two. And three, and these are just regular old double crochets. There we are. Okay, so we should have 10 of them now, and you can see it's kind of a little crazy. It wants to be really stiff and a little awkward, but we're gonna pull this close here in just a second. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yep, 10 double crochets made. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull on that tail. And luckily with this yarn, we can give it a real good tug. <laughs> 
This yarn is made out of, for those who are curious, because I know I will get questions eventually, it is mixed fibers. It's 100% mixed fibers. Um, it's a mix of recycled cotton, polyester, viscose, and acrylic. So it's got a really lovely look and feel to it, I think. Very organic feeling. But it's also delightfully strong. <laughs> you can really, really give that center a tug and make it just as closed as you can. Um, don't hurt yourself, but you can close that up as much as you'd like and as long as you'd like to struggle with it. So we have finished round one. All we need to do now is join to that first double crochet with our slip stitch. So we insert our hook in the top of that first double crochet. And you want to try and pull this one real close. You know, we're not going to be working back into that slip stitch, so it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be open or loose or anything. You can kind of straighten out there. Now we've got our first round done. Ten double crochets worked into a magic ring. That's all. Now round two is where it gets fun, and that's where we make our points, and it's the final round of this pattern. So now we chain two again. One, two, and then we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. So not this first stitch that we joined to. We're going to come to the next one. So we yarn over and put a double crochet right in that next stitch. There we are. Oops, get that through there. There we go. So we have a chain two. We have a double crochet in the next stitch. Now, this is where it gets a little fun. I love this part. We chain three. One, two. I gotta switch back my handhold there. Three. There we go. Pull up a little bit more yarn. Okay. Chain two, double crochet in the next, chain three. Now we're gonna come back down and make two single crochets around the post of the double crochet we just made. So we just go right between the chain two and the double crochet and yarn over and make that single crochet right around the double crochet. So there's one, Oop, here's the first one, and then we go right around there for the second one. There we go. So, chain two, double crochet in the next stitch, chain three, single crochet twice around the body or the post of that double crochet. Then we slip stitch in the next stitch. So not the one that we put the double crochet into, but the very next one. And again, we can make this nice and tight. We're not gonna be working back into it. This is the final round of the pattern. There we go, nice, nice tight slip stitch there. And that's it for our first point. Now we can, we're all set to begin our second one. Chain two, one, two, double crochet in the next stitch. There we go. Then chain three, one, two, three. Oop, there we go. Like I say, sometimes it's a little stiff and it's okay to need to take breaks. I wanted to keep the hook size relatively small for this yarn so that it makes a really nice stiff star but that does mean you gotta take your time a little bit with these stitches. So now we just come back down and make those two single crochets right around the post. So there's one and two. There we go, didn't wanna get on my hook. And then slip stitch in the next stitch. And then we're all set to do again. There's our first two points. And we just continue that all the way around. So if we look at this, You'll see each one of these points takes two stitches to make, right? We've got the one we slip stitch to and then chain two out of, and then we've got the one we make the double crochet in. Everything else is worked around those. So for each of these points, it takes two stitches on that first round. So if you wanted to make the six pointed star, let me pull this back up here. Rather than starting with 10 stitches in the center, you just start with 12. That gives you two more to make an extra point with. And that is really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and do a couple more. Um, this was, like I say, it's a fun pattern in this yarn. If you don't have this yarn, you can use a different yarn. Just use a hook that is going to make it really stiff for you. You'd, normally, if we were crocheting something like a, you know, a pretty sweater or a scarf, we'd want it real drapey and soft. Not for this pattern. This pattern is definitely one where crochet is queen. Crochet is the right craft because it has all the stiffness that you want for something like this. Um, 
you know, there's many things I love about crochet, but that ability to go soft and drapey or really stiff and structured is such a great, such one of, one of the great things about it. It's just one of the things I love about it, the endless possibilities and creativity. So just continuing here, I've got my third star right there, or third point. I keep saying third star, my third point right there. So then I just slip stitch to the next one. Chain two again and keep going all the way around. So you've seen me do that a few times now. It's the same thing for every point. And you can see it right here. We've got a slip stitch, chain two, double crochet in the next stitch, chain three, two single crochets right around that post, slip stitch into the next stitch and do it again. And just continue all the way around. Now I wanted to show you, this is my very first one that I tried this with. So all my little mistakes and frogs and things you can kind of see, but right there you can see is I've just left that little bit of taped up end there. I went ahead and woven my ends and let's go ahead and do that a little bit with this in progress one here. Now it can be pretty tricky to weave in these ends, but one thing that can help a little bit sometimes is if you have a smaller hook, um, simply because finding a yarn needle for this sort of yarn is genuinely difficult. So I like to sometimes just use a smaller hook to help sort of grab it and pull it underneath. Um, sometimes if that doesn't work, the Susan Bates finishing needles are a good option. Um, if you're not familiar with those, unfortunately I don't have one over at this table, usually I do, um, but they are really unique sewing needles where the entire body of the needle itself is open. But you can see right there, just take your time. You can get it under a couple of strands. Now, as you've noticed, this is not trying to come back out. This magic circle is not opening up on me. This yarn has so much stiffness and grip to it. I'm not really worried about this sliding back out. So normally if I made a magic circle, I'd be like, oh gosh, make sure you weave it this way and weave it back that way to make sure it's not going to come back out. With this stuff, I'm not going to worry about it so much. Like I said, it's not something necessarily that you're going to be wearing or playing with. It's going to be hung up and sitting still. So it doesn't need to be quite as forever secure, if you will. But basically that's how I do it. I just take my time as best I can. Be a little tricky because of course this hook is way too small for this yarn. But it is the best way I have found at least for weaving in these ends. If somebody else has some other ideas, please do share them. But I think you get the idea. You just gotta take your time with it. Try a couple of different uh, tools that you might have available. There we go. Now it wants to go through. And then use your fingers you know, as needed to. Sometimes that's just the easiest way. So what happens when you've woven it in a little bit? You've still got all this hanging out here. You don't wanna weave all this in, that's crazy. You've got other things to do. What do we do now? <laughs> it's time to trim it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that tape and I am going to just put that tape right around. I don't know if you guys can see that there, right? It's hard working with clear tape for a demonstration here. <laughs> We're gonna wrap that tape right around the yarn just as close as we can to our work. Round and around it goes until it's nice and secure. There we are. And I'm gonna go ahead and I went ahead and made that a little longer because now, double duty, I'm gonna take my scissors. There we are. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And I'm gonna cut it right over that tape so that it will secure the end that's attached to my project. And at the same time, you know, since this is the first end, it doesn't count. But if this was the end attached to the skein, that end would now be protected as well. So when I cut off this one, I would do the same thing. Wrap it up before you cut it. So then we've got that little end just sort of sticking out right there. And we can just sort of cover them up a little bit and tuck them down in there if needed. You could also add a little dab of glue if you'd prefer. Um, E6000 or hot glue would probably work really well. But I think that's pretty well hidden, especially on the wrong side of something that you're probably going to hang up somewhere. You know, just keep that right side facing out. And I think that will be quite, quite secure for uh, years to come. So yes, and actually, absolutely you could use um, great tip, only me. Um, <laughs> it's difficult, someone's username is only me for anybody confused. Um, yes, you can also use a sewing needle and thread. That's something I typically also recommend if you are using um, the Bernat blanket uh, big or extra thick, same technique. So I've got videos about that, sewing together jumbo yarn. You can also use that. Um, like say that or a bit of tape or a dab of glue on the back for this type of yarn and this type of project would be absolutely perfect. 
Um, then, of course, when it's all finished, like I say, you can do so many fun things with it. You can make a garland with a bunch of them. Um, here are some ornament hooks that I found in my craft room. I thought I'd see how these look here. Let's open that up and just put it right on one of those points. I think that would be really pretty hanging on a tree. Um, if you wanted to, you could, oh, and that's even the back. So there we go. It even looks good from the back. There's the front. Um, if you wanted to, like I say, you could string these up on a garland. Um, you could, you know, sew on some straps or make a little cone or something to sew to the back if you wanted to use it as a tree topper. Um, you know, everybody's got their own look for the holidays these days. And I think that's so fantastic. And I hope that this pattern is one that you guys enjoy making for your holidays as well. So, um, let's see. I think, yes, holding Terry and Ruby had a great, great idea. Holding a gold thread with it would be absolutely beautiful. Um, holding sparklies with this, um, holding textured yarns along with this. You could really have a lot of fun. Um, and then of course, just using any other yarn you've got in your stash, just make sure you pick a hook size that is still going to give you a really stiff fabric. So on most yarns, that would mean going down a hook size or two. Um, with this stuff, well, it's just meant to be kind of stiff. So I think this was pretty close to the recommended size. Um, yeah, they recommended a 10 millimeter on the label. So I did go down one hook size for a nine millimeter for this one. So that's a good way um, for whatever yarn you have to try and make it a little stiffer for projects like this is just going down um, a hook size or two from what's recommended on the label. So I think that is it for today's demo. We'll go ahead and come back to the other camera here. There we go. All right. Thank you. Still haunted. Still need to get some WD-40 on that thing. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today. Um, that is how to make these. Um, we're going to call them macrame crochet stars. They were originally glittery crochet stars in two rounds, but now they're macrame. So um, yeah, check it out. Play with your yarns, play with your hook sizes. And I think you can have a lot of fun with this very simple star pattern um, for the holidays. Both five and six pointed versions are available. Um, other than that, I hope you have a fantastic holiday. Um, Thanksgiving is this week in America here, so I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. If you're not celebrating, hope you still have a great week. Um, stay tuned to mooglyblog.com. Lots of great things coming here this week and in the future. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, everybody.